קשה לזכור מתי זובין מתה הפסיק להיות רק המנצח ההודי, המאסטרו הבינלאומי, והפך לאחד משלנו. דור שני למנצחים שגילה את התזמורת הישראלית בשנת 61 ומאז לא נפרד ממנה. מכיר את הקהל הישראלי מהגב יותר מהרבה פוליטיקאים שפוגשים אותו פנים אל פנים. תמיד הוא כאן כשצריך אותו. אזרח העולם שמדלג בין היבשות עם שרביט המנצחים. מאמין גדול בכוחה של המוזיקה להשכין שלום ולקרב בין העמים. השגריר הכי נאמן של ישראל בעולם. עכשיו, רגע לפני פתיחת עונת החמישים שלו בפילהרמונית, מתה שוב נקרא לדגל כדי לנצח על הקמפיין למען גלעד שליט. You know, Gilad, כמו תמיד הוא מתייצב מיד, אבל הפעם הוא מבקש מאיתנו להאזין לקולות שמגיעים מהעולם, ובעיקר להסתכל במראה. I have such pleasure in looking forward to this talk, I can't tell you. Because I like, if I'm given time, to express myself both about music and about, about us, about this country, about me looking at this country from inside and outside. Because it's 50 years now, almost, next year, that I, and I remember Israel 50 years ago like it was yesterday. Yeah, you know, I thought you were like one of those ants who sees the, you know, the grown up and says, I know you since you were a kid. So you know us, Israel. When was the first time you were on stage here in Israel? 1961. 61. So Israel was, what, 13 years old. And now it's grown up. It's over 60. So, you know, I was thinking when you look at this child that has grown up, you think what? You say to yourself, what? Ramat Aviv hardly existed. <laughs> <laughs> It was outside Tel Aviv. Uh, and I have only fond memories, very fond memories. And I love this country. It's, it's where I've grown up. It's been part of my life and part of my education. But you know, it's interesting. A lot of people in Israel are walking around now with an existential fear. They're not sure Israel will exist in 10 or 20 years. You know, that, that's I the state that of, of hysterics that people But are I in. don't hear that only from pessimists. I hear that from people who really love the country and who feel the country is at the moment going in directions that they don't really agree with. Do you and share that fear? Do you, can well, you relate? Because you come from the outside, inside. You don't have to stay here day by day. A, a very well-known Israeli that I will not name, a politician, tells me with fear that he hopes that Israel will one day not be a footnote of history. I get goose flesh of fear when I hear such a thing. Because when you s hear about history in a longer scope, it, it, all this is possible. And we must do everything And we are doing everything to, of course, not make it possible. But then you have instances where living outside, I feel and I hear. I don't hear anti-Semites criticizing Israel. This is the difference. Because I hear in Israel, CNN is anti-Israel. BBC is anti-Israel. The Fox News is anti -Israel. This has to stop. You have to gauge yourself also from the outside because these newscasters are really telling the facts and they are interviewing both sides too. So, but you know, it's It started with the Gaza war. Before the Gaza war, I didn't hear this isolationist attitude that the world is looking upon Israel for now. At, at the moment, Israel is being isolated. There's no doubt. And what should Israel do in your eyes? Well, I don't think it's just public relations. I see the problem of this government that if they completely go the way the world or Europe or America wants them, their coalition will fall. So I see the prime minister sort of dancing on raw eggs. 
And well, for many years you were considered to be one of the most outspoken Israeli ambassadors around the well, world. Well, I still am. Is it hard? Are you still? Can we still count yes, you one hundred percent, or are, are you feeling that you have to take a step back? Because uh, last year I remember you were very, very critical about uh, Lieberman, Foreign Minister Lieberman, and about the and the, about the government and about the government actions. I was thinking maybe you're having second thoughts or maybe taking a step back. Well, even to, in the, today's paper, I read that Lieberman is angry with Netanyahu, Netanyahu yeah. because of some Turkish liaison. Uh, I don't want to comment on that because I don't know the details. But Mr. Lieberman should also go outside and look at Israel and talk with people. I'm sure he has a standpoint, but I was very critical when I heard that he had this <laughs> Kafkaesque plan of of shifting peoples in Israel, like Ceausescu or like Stalin did. Uh, and I was completely against that, uh, you know, removing uh, people from the Arab Israelis and putting them into the West Bank, etc., etc. I, I think that's now only a fantasy. Now, a lot of Jewish Americans that I, re that I spend time with are much more to the right of Lieberman even. So I have my arguments with them because they don't know the facts. But when I go to Shvaram and Nazareth and see Israeli boys and Arab, Arab Israelis playing music together, and I know this harmony can exist, I just know it. Do you still feel that you have to defend Israel? Yes, all, much more than any time before, much more. Are you being criticized by, by people saying, when will you no. wake up regarding Israel? No, no, because a lot of the things they say I agree with, Mm -hmm. I didn't agree with everything that how Israel carried on the war in Gaza. That was a turning point for you, right? Yes. What happened? The exaggerated way I feel that the Israelis went into Gaza, although I completely understand their frustration of being bombed in Zderot for eight years. I completely understand that. You wanted to have an or an, a concert there? I always wanted to go to Zderot and have a concert. The army didn't let us because it was too dangerous. Of course, you know, you never knew when a rocket fell in the fields or whatever. But the exaggerated way that we went in and then found out that the United Nations headquarters were bombed, this and schools were bombed. We don't know all the details and nobody will find out the details because there is no inquiry. It's interesting you say we, you know, you say we. Of course, because I'm one of us, or one of you. I don't, I don't even know exactly where my place is sometimes. But when you see from the outside, the outside journalists showing you the facts of exactly what's happening, and you find out that the Israelis don't know exactly what happened there, then I object, of course. So maybe you have a problem not with the Israeli government, but with the Israeli public, because the Israel pu Israeli public, uh, again and again, is voting for a right-wing uh, coalition. And the Israeli yes, public is feeling that the world is against them no matter what they do. In the Gaza war, I found out, or I felt when I came after the Gaza war here, that practically the whole country was in negation. That whoever I spoke with, left, right, sympathetic, non-sympathetic, all said, no, enough, we lost our patience, we had to do this. It was like the whole country spoke with one mind. And I couldn't believe it. Really, there were tragedies in the Gaza war that they are still paying for. And I think we should do everything now, even if it's Hamas, and even if Hamas wants the destruction of Israel, which I've, of course I'm completely sympathetic with the Israelis, but how can we deal with people who want our destruction? So I, I completely understand that. Israel should speak with Hamas, negotiate with Hamas. In a, in, a, in a distant way, absolutely. And it's interesting you're saying that. You're saying that even though on Monday you are going to conduct a very special uh, concert yes, uh, because what for I, Gilad Shalit, for the yes, freedom of Gilad Shalit, which is held in Hamas for four years, by Hamas for four years. Which is intolerable to me, intolerable, that a Red Cross cannot visit. There's not one Geneva Convention that says the Red Cross can't visit a prisoner, and they won't let him. Uh, and our concert originally started with just one protest 
please let the Red Cross visit this boy and give a report to his parents. I'm going to ask a personal question, if you, if, if you, if you permit me. Is your, is your attitude toward Gilad Shalit has something to do with the fact that you yourself have a son in the Israeli army? Well, my son served on the border of Gaza uh, last year for a month or two, and I was very worried, too. So, so the fact that you're so committed to Gilad Shalit has something to do with that, that you have a son in this? Well, no, it's, it's, uh, Gilad Shalit's case is really now so international. Even yesterday, George Mitchell uh, demanded his release, etc. I don't know what that helps. And I believe that they want so many thousand prisoners. And I agree with the Israeli government also that you cannot just give them all the murderers they want. Uh, so I'm, I look at both sides, really. I'm very fair. But I still think we should help them rebuild their, their, their little country. We should help them. When I see these cement blocks of bombs, you know, it's over a year now. How are they living there? And every day they pass those places, they hate us more. Do we want to foster that? Why shouldn't we help them rebuild? So you tell me the child that you saw grow up here when you first came here now has grown up to be someone who is blind to the suffering of other people? That's what you're saying? Blind that the Israelis to the are blind to the suffering of the, Ga the people in Gaza? Some people I speak to are blind to that. And that makes they, you sad. In other words, that makes you they sad. don't are really you care. Are you disappointed? They don't, I'm very disappointed. They don't really care because this country has been living in a state of war, in a state of tension, and three, four generations have grown up, and the first thing an Israeli thinks of is his own security and things. I understand that completely. But I find it's about time now that they started looking at the outside and see how they are treating other people too. You're talking about what the Israelis should do. You know, one concern, serious concern, I think, uh, Israelis are feeling now is the fact that they might Israel might be isolated. It started as a political movement. Now it's an academic and also cultural boycott. Is it something that you feel it's also that growing. it's coming? That the boycott is coming? It's growing. Our tour of Scandinavia was cancelled recently because uh, Scandinavia is now so anti-Israel that there was no support. Even the Jews in Scandinavia were afraid to be sponsors. Putting your political views aside, can you agree with a musician or an artist who says, I cannot perform in a place where I cannot relate to the political well, opinion? Well, a musician is as honest as he wants. If he feels by, by coming to Israel, he's acting against his conscience, he's, that is what he's doing. Uh, I cannot condone it. I will never stop coming here. But I still feel that enemies should be able to talk in some way or the other. What did we do in India? What, you know, Ben Gurion used to tell me that he's so sorry, he is so sad that the country of Gandhi has no relations with his country because, you know, for many years there was. He says, This is the man that I worshipped, that we could not do the revolution here against the English that he did without blood that we had to fight the English here and the Arabs. It's Arab. great that you can tell me what Ben-Gurion told you. <laughs> I, I used mean, to talk to Ben-Gurion right, a lot. So Ben-Gurion was a great expert about my religion. That's how our contact started. But you once said that music could be the bridge. I, I, I fear music that, I fear bring, that it's, 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 we're past that point. It can bring people together. We give concerts. When we give a concert on, on the walls of Akko, Arabs and Jews are sitting together. But we don't do enough. But I think what I, Daniel is doing Daniel with his Bierman Divan Bierman, Orchestra yeah. is wonderful. That's the only forum where Jews and Israel, uh, Israelis and Arabs are sitting together in harmony. You, you mentioned Daniel Berenboim, and I think there was a distinct line between Daniel Berenboim and, and, and yourself. You, in some way, managed to stay in the, in the borders of the consensus. You could say what you were feeling, but you were still in the consensus, while Daniel Berenboim went outside. Is it, is it something that you well, were, he were you afraid of doing that? as an Israeli. I'm not an Israeli. He is an Israeli and he expresses his views in a democracy. There's nothing wrong with that. But you had to be more careful because you're not an Israeli, that's no, what you're saying? No, I'm not being careful now, do you feel? I'm being very uh, But I feel it's hard for you to be outspoken like this. No. You know, I was once at a dinner at an Israeli home when neither Paris nor Sharon were in the government. And they had a discussion, 
And I was almost like a moderator. And it was for me an education. Sharon said, Jerusalem has to be ours. It is written in the Bible. Jerusalem is mentioned so many times in the Bible, I don't know, 200 times, that it is a Jewish thing. And Paris, the great philosopher, didn't even answer that question. And he said, look, if we don't help each other in our neighborhood, we will never go ahead. And he mentioned in those days Jordan. Why don't we help Jordan? Jordan has no, not real water. Jordan has not enough wheat to make bread. Why don't we help them? And this lit a whole world for me that by helping you have goodwill. We have to help each other build. I feel the, if there would be an open market between Ramallah, Tel Aviv, and one day, inshallah, Gaza too, there would be such an, is a growth of, of, of uh, A lot economic. of people who are hearing you now will say, Maestro, with all due respect, you're very naive. Maybe, maybe, but I'm a dreamer. I'm an artist. I can dream. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the, um, the orchestra. Uh, a lot of Israelis feel that it's not what it used to be. The orchestra? Yeah, the I think it's as better as, as it ever has been. You know, the prestigious uh, Gramophone magazine didn't even list it in the top 25 uh, Well, they don't orchestras. come and hear our concerts, do they? So you feel it's just as it used to be? It has much better. Much better. Do you think... The it... young people in the Israel Philharmonic are now so much better than the previous generation. Uh, we know with the success we have uh, abroad, and the fact that we are invited continuously. You've been with the Philharmonic for 50 years. Since it's, I first came. That's amazing. 50 years, yes. You know, in, the, in, in, the, in an era where everything is fast and speedy and changing, 50 years is, is amazing. Do you sometimes feel that it's enough and that that's you should step down? That's why I speak down? so openly, too, uh, about why, why? everything. Because I, I feel I'm one of you. Uh, and some things. But do you, do you feel I'm people po po poking in your back saying, Okay, 50 years is enough. Maestro, if you don't mind, move aside. Do you well, feel the I, pokes in the back? Every five or six years, I ask the orchestra, you still want me to stay on, or would you like to make a change? I'm very open about that, because this director for life is not a contract. It's a handshake. Yeah. It's an honor. But, you know, I'm asking this, and I'm saying, maybe you are annoyed by the fact that young people sit across you and around you and start saying, Excuse me, you're past 70, it's time for you to go. Doesn't it annoy you that people, you know, start going with the foot when, no, no, like we do in Hebrew? But I don't hear that. You don't hear that? No, it's no, it's okay. And, and as I said, I asked them openly. I asked the, the Asefa, the orchestra, and then they discuss amongst themselves and they tell me, no, we would like you to stay on. So you're staying? But any time they say so we're, no. We're, but you're staying for now? At the moment, yes. Great. As long as they want me. <laughs> it will be the orchestra Or as to long decide. as you want us. Yes, but I, uh, it doesn't come to that point. Uh, from my way of thinking, the orchestra has to want to make music with me. And the day they want as a majority No, to I said stop. us, the Israelis. I wasn't talking about the orchestra. Uh, yeah, but my... Uh, I would take the orchestra's opinion. Uh, first. Last question I wanted to ask you. You are a citizen of the world and you have so many houses and you're... A, yes, but I'm a citizen of India first. That's what I wanted yes. to ask. Where do you feel at home? I where is the place on the globus where you say, at last, I got home? Bombay. Bombay, yes. still? Mumbai. And you haven't lived there for many years? More than 50 years. And still Mumbai. But when I come there, I, I, I disappear in the crowd, and I feel completely at home. Zubin Met, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. It was my pleasure. Thank you. I talk too much. I'm no, sorry. no, no, no. <laughs> it was fascinating. Thank you very much.